This is something we believe 5G can do. We're going to launch more cities this year. We're going to work with the best brands, and Disney's there. We love working with Verizon and with your team, Hans. We're developing 5G ultra-wideband for ultra-fast speeds and massive capacity. Verizon's 5G ultra-wideband, it all starts with the fan experience. We are working with industries where we think there are opportunities for 5G to make a difference. 2035, carbon neutral. 2025, 50% of consumption should come from renewable energy. Hello everyone, and thank you for having me here today. It's a real privilege to be in the company of the CTIA members who do so much important work for our industry, particularly around policy making and pushing the boundaries of technology through innovation. Now, this work allows us to better serve our customers, especially at times of challenge. It allows us to move the world forward. Now, we're at an inflection time for our industry. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a difficult, dramatic time for so many of us, for so many different reasons. Loss of loved ones, declining health, social isolation, and economic impact. But besides dramatically changing our lives, the pandemic underscores the collective power of this industry and the importance of strong, reliable networks. Our networks became the critical infrastructure enabling our country to stay productive, allowing us to go to work remotely, keeping our children educated from home, keeping us connected with our loved ones as we had to maintain social distance. The pandemic also accelerated technology development, innovation and adoption. At Verizon, a majority of our stores temporarily closed during the early months of the pandemic, while customers flew to digital telesales and our customer services channels. Our digital interactions increased by more than 70% as a result of the crisis. So we readied our stores with our touchless retail experience in anticipation of customers' return. We also redeployed our retail talent to continue to serve our customers in other business critical areas. We then followed with hybrid working strategies to bring forward the best aspects of remote and on-site work to our employees and provide them with more engaging and inclusive work experiences. Now, many of these changes are here to stay, grow and expand, including touchless retail, work from home and hybrid work and school arrangements. Earlier this year, we commissioned a look forward study with Morning Consult about changing lifestyles and technology expectations for the year ahead. More than half of employed adults said that they were working at least partially remotely, nearly twice the share before the pandemic began. 60% of respondents said they expect kids to be able to attend remote school during inclement weather, for example. There is no denying the pandemic pushed us further into a digital world. But it also exposed gaps in technology access and affordability. Many Americans still can't work or study remotely because they don't have a reliable broadband connection. I'm proud of the fact that Verizon serves the most rural wireless customers in the US and has the highest reliability ranking in the industry. And I'm even prouder that we continue to grow our commitment to helping vulnerable communities and bridging the digital divide. As part of Citizen Verizon, our responsible business plan to impact economic, environmental and social advancement, we're spending in excess of $3 billion between 2020 and 2025 across a number of different programs and initiatives focused on internet access and inclusion. Initiatives such as FIOS Forward Program and our Emergency Broadband Benefit Program both provide broadband at an affordable cost as part of the Social Impact Plan. And we know that with access to technology comes a dire need for education, online literacy and community outreach. This aspect of the digital divide is another area we need to help overcome. And that's why we're engaging in new partnerships with groups 
aimed at helping vulnerable communities learn about technology. As part of Citizen Verizon, we're partnering with the National 4-H Council to provide digital skill training to adults in rural communities. This partnership focuses on people of color through the 4-H Tech Changemakers program. And Verizon Innovative Learning is also resuming its project-based STEM learning programs, young men of color and rural young women. This program is aimed at bringing digital skills training to rural communities. We're continuing our investment in a number of edtech initiatives, including a new education portal called Verizon Innovative Learning HQ, Verizon Innovative Learning Schools expansion, a new Verizon Innovative Learning Labs, and a new Community Forward initiative. It's how we help democratize access to next-gen technology resources, including curriculum and learning tools such as VR equipment, 3D printing stations, AR apps and more in a state-of-the-art experiential learning environment. These are just a few of the many initiatives we undertake every year to help people understand technology and the impact it can have in their daily lives. And I know Verizon is among other companies in our industry working to address access, affordability and accessibility of technology to people. Ultimately, market forces too will help increase technology adoption as they have in the past. But we know more needs to be done to get all of America online. It's in the interests of us all as more equitable access and education allows society more freely participate in available opportunities. And that's not just better for our society, it's better for the business and economy overall. Bridging the digital divide is an opportunity to both do good and do well for Americans. This is why it's important to continue to invest in network access and in new technologies. Now, 5G will play a critical role in that, and I'll talk about that shortly. But continuing to bring the digital divide and maintaining America's technology leadership will require work from us in the industry so that we can build on the work we've done so far. How? We laid out some of our thinking in bold steps we can take to close the digital divide in a white paper called Accelerating America. To make a difference, all of us need to work together combining the strengths of both market-driven approach and targeted support of the government where market forces alone leave gaps. Here is some of our thinking. The market forces are helping to make broadband internet more accessible. The 2021 Broadband Pricing Index, an annual report put out by US Telecom, revealed Americans are paying less in 2021 for broadband services than in 2020. Technology advancements are unlocking faster speeds for customers for less. That's a good thing. And as this industry does its part, solving our nation's broadband challenges also requires a strong commitment from the government. Overly burdensome regulation, stifle competition, unintentionally hurt customers, and allow other countries to outpace our innovation. Congress can help make important steps to address these changes. For example, Congress could allocate funds for a new permanent broadband program that supplements the existing Lifeline program. This would provide recipients more choice to meet their needs for wireline or wireless services, or both. Participants would also be eligible for a biannual equipment benefit. Congress could also look to fund digital literacy programs and provide support to state and local governments to modernize their systems to enable citizens to access information and resources online and via mobile devices. While our industry invests heavily and continues to make our networks more robust and efficient, rising content costs obscure some of the benefits that flow to customers. As I mentioned before, affordable access is only one part of the solution to bridge the digital divide. As we continue to expand broadband coverage, and 5G will accelerate these efforts, we also have to do our part to encourage broadband internet adoption. Even if internet service was free and available to every household, there would still be a significant portion of the population that would not use it. A recent survey conducted by National Telecommunications and Information Administration, an agency of the US Department of Commerce, 
found that the number one reason some Americans don't use the internet has nothing to do with access, cost, or privacy concerns. 13% of survey respondents said they don't use the internet because they just aren't interested in it or don't see the need. As shocking as this revelation might be, it underscores the need for education, online literacy, and community outreach. Meaningful change can only happen when people begin to see why they should be online and how to use the internet. Bridging access, accessibility, affordability, and education gaps, and leading the world in technology innovation and 5G go hand in hand. 5G isn't just another G, 5G is about real-world solutions to some of our biggest problems. It's about answers to the challenges we face right now. It's in that context that I want to tell you about the extraordinary progress that this technology has made over the past year. Our industry is investing billions of dollars to build out 5G networks. These networks are at the core of a new digital environment that blends artificial intelligence analytics, cloud computing, and 5G networks to enable new services and products. 5G meets the growing demand to create and move data and new knowledge faster and more efficiently to support an increasingly digital and interconnected economy. It has the power to challenge the rules around access. It reduces the barriers to innovation and affords the opportunity to keep America ahead in innovation. It has the potential to be the most inclusive technology of our times. For our part, this means building a 5G network that is flexible and open to all potential partners, allowing more flexibility, greater scalability, and cost efficiency. This includes many of you and allows for continued innovation and better experiences delivered to customers. We are helping to build the ecosystem from the ground up, partnering with major system integrators and entrepreneurs to develop 5G-enabled solutions for everything from retail and manufacturing to healthcare and public safety. These opportunities only increase when you factor in the work we have done on edge computing. And adding C-band to our already strong spectrum holding will expand our 5G ultra wideband coverage and allow this ecosystem of partners we've developed to grow right along with us. With that growth and expansion, our customers are the real winners. We're deploying a multi-purpose network. Previously, we had one network for mobility and one for home. Our 5G network can serve both mobility needs and home connectivity needs. By the end of this year, millions of homes will be covered with a wireless connection. Small business and large enterprises alike will gain crucial high-speed, high-capacity, low-latency connectivity to do business in the future. And finally, we will cover more than 100 million people with our 5G ultra-wideband mobility service by the end of the first quarter of 2022. This supercharged 5G will ultimately power solutions from things like immersive education, enhanced emergency response, advanced robotics, autonomous vehicles, and so much more. We have endless opportunities with 5G, and we need commitment from government and regulatory bodies to support 5G. As we build the 5G ecosystem, we need regulators to continue their efforts to remove obstacles, accelerate deployments, and identify where uniform national rules should apply. Building the 5G ecosystem is about working together to find innovative solutions and deliver the best services for our customers and society as a whole. Thank you again for inviting me to speak to you today. And as I said at the beginning, we're at an inflection point for our industry. 5G is rolling across the US communities, delivering a promise of transformative experience like never before, accelerating our economic recovery and growth. As an industry, we have an opportunity to use the power of 5G technology to make our community safer, more equitably connected, powering a better future for everyone. To do that, we need to work together. Thank you. These last few years, people have been thrown into a whole new world. And we've been there for them 
in ways that no one else could match. Now, no matter what the future holds, we'll continue to be there for them so they can continue to... Let's connect. Whatever our customers are looking to do, we've got them covered. No one else has what we have.